Hey guys, Jack here. Today suffering from beta withdrawal symptoms. I've got a hot fever, a sweat, and the darkness inside of me is burning up into an infernal rage. Memories of Sinai Desert, trolling snipers and galloping horses haunt my dreams. But in the background here, some SMLE carbine gameplay. Yes, snipers can actually play the objective if you set your mind to it. So Battlefield 1's beta has just finished and we got a really good taste of what to expect when the game releases next month, but we didn't have the full sample of weapons gadgets and goodies at our disposal for either the player classes or vehicles. Now though we know exactly what kind of toys in the final build that we'll get to play with thanks to some smart people looking through the game files of the beta reddit user void glitch I believe found out all of this stuff and dumped it on the BF1 sub. In terms of the weapons there's some really cool looking stuff in there especially the revolvers I won't go through it all though but some notable inclusions are the BAR for the support class, the Springfield rifle for the scout and a teeny tiny pistol called the Calibri that looks very threatening. I've linked in the description below an album of what the real guns look like and I believe that was put together by Mozzie321 and BF Bulletin if you want to see all of the guns in the game in their real life form. Now then, the meat and bones of today's video, the class gadgets and vehicle variants. There's some really interesting stuff found in the game files and a lot of new reveals here. Let's start things off with the assault class. In the beta we had access to the AT rocket gun, a long distance tool against tanks that does reasonably low damage. Then we had the more effective anti-tank grenades that required you to get a bit closer and then lastly dynamite which required you to get closer still and also time it well because dynamite no longer sticks to objects like C4 did. But check this out, for the assault class the last gadget that we haven't seen yet is called the limpet mine. It's an explosive charge that can be attached to an object and then detonates after a few seconds so it's not remote, it looks like you put it on the object and then like maybe a few seconds later it's gonna blow up. So so does that mean that the C4 Jeep Ram or even C4 horses are once again going to be kind of a possibility? We can only dream. As for the medic, there's a bit of a spanner in the works, pardon the pun, it will all make sense in a minute. We have the medical crate that we saw in the beta, that's the large version of a healing station that you can put down as well as the bandage pouch that you can throw around to heal allies. The adrenaline syringe of course is used as the revive mechanic and the medic also has access to a grenade launcher with three different variants, frag, smoke and HE. That was actually in the beta but not many people ended up using it. Could the grenade launcher be better on the support class maybe? I don't know, only time will tell. Lastly we've got the wrench, that's right the medic will be responsible for repairing friendly vehicles. It will be really interesting to see how this works and if it makes vehicles stronger with the ability to self repair and also be repaired by friendly medics if they're around or maybe they're in the tank and they jump out and give it a few knocks on the old wrench, we'll see. Then we've got support and honestly this is the most underwhelming class for me right now. Some of the weapons are actually reasonably fun to use, the MG15 is one of those but the gadgets just don't really give people a reason to play the class. Trip mines we saw in the beta and there are three different variants of those, explosive gas and incendiary. Then you've got your two ammo disposals, the crate and the pouch. And then lastly the one that we haven't seen in game yet, although there is a clip of it for a few seconds in one of the earlier trailer videos, the mortar. Again in three different versions, the HE, the airburst and the smoke. Now on paper that doesn't sound very exciting to me but it really does depend on how useful and powerful the mortar is. If it's really good then maybe it will give people a reason to use the class again but all I can think of is the mortars on BF3, I just picture players sitting near spawn on rush mode. Yeah. Of course the mortar in BF4 was remote but that wasn't possible in World War 1 so I imagine that you'll need to be right next to your mortar when operating it much like in BF3. Overall though the support class looks like it's going to be a bit underwhelming. I for one don't want to be sitting back operating a mortar but I'm sure some people will enjoy it and like I said the mortar could be a really effective gadget we just don't know how powerful it is yet. It might be really good at taking out tanks because I really feel like the support needs an effective anti-tank tool and also how hard is this thing going to be to aim. If it's really hard to aim and you just got to kind of guess it then maybe it ain't going to be so good. 
And then lastly, we've got the Scout class, which felt like most people's go-to class in the beta, mainly due to the fact that it's so satisfying to play, and the long-range engagements of Sinai Desert, it just worked well, the bullet velocity is really quick, it's quite easy to snipe people. The Scout actually has some really cool gadgets though. In the beta, we saw the Flare Gun, two versions, the Spotting Flare, which you fire up into the air to spot enemies, and the Flash Flare to blind enemies, although that thing seemed to linger on the ground for ages, like a burning sun, it was ridiculous. But apparently, actually, it blinds tanks as well which I guess is worth knowing. The K bullets of course were a really good tool to take down light vehicles and also do some damage to tanks. This can be an extremely useful tool to stop a tank from repairing for example and help your assault players defeat it. We also have the spotting scope which was a lot more useful than I think people realised because you could actually use it from behind cover and it would act as sort of a periscope. Use it and spot enemies and it's going to give them an outline rather than just a red Dorito. Now I don't know if the whole spotting behind cover thing was a bug, I think it's by design and if so that's pretty cool. And then we've got two new gadgets that we haven't seen yet, which are very exciting. The Trench Shield and the Helmet Decoy. Now the Trench Shield is a shield that can be deployed to allow you to snipe safely from a prone position. This is pretty interesting, so I guess it's a small shield that sits in front of you with some sort of gap to snipe through. Of course, if you can snipe through it, then I imagine someone can clearly hit you back if they've got accurate fire. These were actually real and used in World War One. I. I saw one of these at the Imperial War Museum in the video log that I did, if you guys want to go check that out. And then we've got the helmet decoy, which I love the sound of. It's apparently a helmet that you can use as a decoy that can actually be spotted as a sniper by the enemy team and then reveals the location of enemies that are firing at it. So it's kind of like a bait and switch. I think a lot of fun could be had with this and also a lot of people wondering why they aren't getting a kill when they're hitting what they think is a player in the head. I don't think we've ever had a gadget like that before in a Battlefield game, so that's going to be pretty fun. And then there's a couple of other things that were discovered that don't really fit into any class, and it's possible that these are single-player elements and nothing to do with multiplayer. There's a grappling hook, a Shamuli line throwing gun, which will launch a grappling hook at a surface to reach high walls and buildings. I'm thinking of it a lot like the grappling hook in Hardline. I do think that this could work in multiplayer, so it's a possibility that it's in there, but really, now I think this is definitely a single-player element only gadget. Then there's something called shell casings, which again, that sounds like something related to single player a bit like in the hardline campaign, perhaps a distraction tactic in a stealth based section of the game where you can throw them and make a noise and distract some enemies. It uh, doesn't really sound like anything that would be used in multiplayer. Lastly, an observation balloon. Well, this could be anything and in all honesty, while I think it could be some sort of spotting gadget for one of the classes, it also sounds like something from the single player. It could be cool though, a balloon that a class puts up into the air like a non-moving mav and it just floats around spotting enemies until someone shoots it down. Moving on in terms of vehicle packages that were found in the data leak it seems that we pretty much had all of them available to us in the beta apart from a few. It looks like we had access to all the packages for the planes so for the attack plane we could use the ground support variant, the tank buster and the airship buster. The airship buster of course will be far more useful on maps with the airship and as a lot of people found out the tank buster was extremely powerful. The airship buster of course that's going to do a lot more damage to to the airship if it's called in on a map that's using it. The bomber plane had the torpedo package which once again will be utilised far better on maps with the warship and attack boats. Then the barrage bomber and the firestorm bomber. Barrage gives you a camera to drop masses of bombs on the ground and the firestorm bomber is equipped with an incendiary payload to deny infantry on the ground, kind of like napalm I guess. Lastly the fighter plane gives us the trench fighter, dogfighter and bomber killer packages all which were available during the beta. The same applies for the tanks, we got to utilise all the packages on the heavy and light tanks. So the heavy had the heavy breakthrough and fire variants and the light tank had the flanker, close support and howitzer packages and rest assured the light tank will be getting a nerf before the final release. The howitzer package was especially strong against infantry and had a pretty unnecessary emergency repair that got you easily out of a jam and recharged way too quickly in my opinion. The landship and artillery trucks are the ones who will come with packages that we haven't really seen yet. The landship had the tank hunter and squad support packages during the beta but on launch we'll also get a mortar version of it. This gives a rear mounted mortar that can fire out either smoke, gas or fire shells which make it particularly useful against groups of infantry. The artillery truck also gets a mortar package, a versatile mortar equipped with many types of shells to deal with infantry at range. I found the artillery truck a bit underwhelming in the beta 
later. The packages we had available for it, minus the anti-air package, just didn't really excite me. It felt like I had access to a powerful cannon, but in a really weak shell and it was incredibly hard to aim. Like, why wouldn't I just go in a tank? This is especially noticeable when you consider that it takes up a tank slot to use it. There were a lot of other things in the leaked info as well, and some of it makes no real sense and it's completely out of context. Supply drops, for example, what's all that about? Maybe at some point there was kind of a command mode in the game. Some very interesting gadgets for both vehicles and players, but it has to be said that it's been stripped back a bit from all the crazy gadgets in Battlefield 4, and I think that that's probably for the best. And that's all for today folks, I hope you had a nice weekend and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, that would be awesome. If you didn't, a thumbs down, I don't mind, I promise I won't bite. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, did you enjoy the beta, did you hate it? Can't wait for the launch, well we've not really got that long to wait now anyways. As always, thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.